Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch small talk series where we discuss some common clinical topics that you see in your day to day surgical OPD. So our today's topic is acute pancreatitis and what we are going to do is discuss the most basic definition and classification of acute pancreatitis and as is our way even this we will try to simplify for you so that you can remember it easily in your exams as well as in your day to day practice. So before going into the classification just a bit overview the revised Atlanta classification came in 2012 and this is a revision of the original Atlanta classification which came in 1992. So why this update was required is because there was a lot of confusion in the nomenclature of the acute pancreatitis disease its classification, its severity, as well as its phases. So this committee got together and they formed this revised Atlanta classification. So what are the components that you can remember through the RAC? Uh, the first is the definition of acute pancreatitis and this was standardized by this group in 2012. So now acute pancreatitis is defined as the presence of Abdominal pain suggestive of acute pancreatitis. I am sure all of you know some of the basic characters of the pain of acute pancreatitis is epigastric pain or upper abdominal pain radiating to back which is increased by lying in supine position and so you commonly see these patients lying on their side or sitting and leaning forward which relieves the pain. Then serum amylase or lipase levels more than three times the upper limit of laboratory normal value. Remember it is amylase or lipase and third point is imaging features suggestive of pancreatitis. And when two of three of these points are present the patient is diagnosed to have acute pancreatitis. So when you see this kind of picture, you should consider the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. And to remember that in acute pancreatitis, the CT or MRI are not very useful in the first week of the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis and thereby the revised Atlanta classification group very clearly mentions this and they state that the investigations in the form of initial imaging are most useful when performed 5 to 7 days after the episode has begun which is the first day of pain in the patient of acute pancreatitis. This is because of two reasons. One is that the imaging findings don't correlate very well in the first week of diagnosis and second is that even if you detect a local complication in the first week you will not necessarily intervene and this we will discuss in subsequent small talk series and hence commonly it is the clinical diagnosis in the form of presence of pain supported by blood investigations in the form of amylase and lipase and only in presence of confusion is when you should do the imaging for these patients. So this is the first thing that the revised Atlanta classification gives you and that is the definition of acute pancreatitis. Now we go to the classification and here they give you two or three very important points. One is they classify fluid collections in a standard manner. Second is they give you the severity of acute pancreatitis and how to identify the severity in the patients and guide management. So these are two very important points and the third is phases of acute pancreatitis. That is acute pancreatitis the disease evolves in two phases. One is early phase which is the first week from the presence of pain and then there is late phase which starts after one week of the presence of pain. And why are these phases important? We will see when we see how they have classified the severity of acute pancreatitis because that is where these phases come into play 
and they also guide the management of the patients that the management in first phase or the early phase is different from the management in the patients after one week of diagnosis or after late phase has started so now to classify cvrt we need to know the organ failure whether the patient has organ failure or not and this as per revised atlanta classification is based on the modified marshall scoring system now modified marshall scoring system is in itself a small talk but just to give you the basics if your patient's blood pressure is less than 90 and not responding to fluids it's a marshall score 2 similarly pao2 by fio2 less than 300 and creatinine more than 1.9 mg per deciliter these are the points when present individually also suggest organ failure so when organ failure is present you have to see the duration for which the organ failure is present if the duration is more than 48 hours then it is persistent organ failure and these are the patients who have severe acute pancreatitis so patients with persistent organ failure as per modified marshall scoring system that is organ failure more than 48 hours have severe acute pancreatitis now the patients who don't have any organ failure and who don't have local or systemic complications these patients have mild acute pancreatitis and the group that remains that is patients who have organ failure less than 48 hours or patients who have local collections or systemic complications these are the patients who are moderately severe acute pancreatitis so this is the classification of acute pancreatitis based on severity given by revised atlanta classification so the severity of acute pancreatitis can be mild acute pancreatitis when there are no complications in the local peripancreatic region or systemically and there is no organ failure as per the modified marshall scoring system it is moderately severe acute pancreatitis when there are local or systemic complications and or transient organ failure which is less than 48 hour duration and persistent organ failure in presence or absence of local and systemic complications is severe acute pancreatitis so this is the third part of revised atlanta classification by which you can understand how to use the nomenclature of acute pancreatitis now we go to the fourth part and we understand how the collections are labeled this is more important for the imaging when we do and how to report these collections as well as how to see these scans so when you see a fluid collection in a patient of acute pancreatitis the revised atlanta classification gives you a road map on how to label them so in a patient with less than 4 weeks of diagnosis if there is no necrosis then this is known as interstitial edematous pancreatitis so this is a patient who has no necrosis and the duration of disease is less than 4 weeks now when this patient has a fluid collection it is known as acute peripancreatic fluid collection so the disease is known as interstitial edematous pancreatitis and the fluid collection in this when it is less than 4 weeks duration is acute peripancreatic fluid collection now when necrosis is present then this is a necrotizing pancreatitis and in these patients when fluid is present it is known as acute necrotic collection remember that this is less than 4 weeks of diagnosis so acute peripancreatic fluid collection when there is no necrosis in interstitial edematous pancreatitis or iep and when necrosis is present and fluid is present it is acute necrotic collection now when this goes beyond 4 weeks in iep it becomes what is known as a pseudocyst so pseudocyst by definition now can occur only in iep 
when there is no necrosis and the fluid collection persists for more than four weeks. On the other hand, an acute necrotic collection beyond four weeks becomes walled off necrosis. So the term pancreatic abscess is no longer used. It is known as walled off necrosis. And this occurs in patients with necrotizing pancreatitis. Thus, to summarize the revised Atlanta classification, which is one of the most important aspects of understanding acute pancreatitis and how to use its nomenclature, this comprehensive article gives you the definition of acute pancreatitis as discussed abdominal pain, enzymes and imaging, two of the three points. It gives you phases of acute pancreatitis which has management implications and these we will see in subsequent small talks. Early phase is less than one week and late phase is more than one week. It gives you the severity of acute pancreatitis based on the modified Marshall scoring system where no complications and no organ failure is mild. Local or systemic complications and transient organ failure less than 48 hours is moderately severe and persistent organ failure is severe acute pancreatitis. As well as it gives a nomenclature for fluid collections wherein interstitial edematous pancreatitis or the pancreatitis in which there is no necrosis, if the duration of disease is less than 4 weeks, it is labeled as acute peripancreatic fluid collection. And if the duration is more than 4 weeks, it is labeled as pseudosis. Whereas in cases of necrotizing pancreatitis, the fluid collection less than 4 weeks is acute necrotic collection and fluid collection more than 4 weeks is walled off necrosis. In any of these collections, there can be infection which on the scan is shown by presence of air and clinically it is shown by worsening of pain or worsening of enzymes. So there are different ways in which you can understand whether a patient has an infected collection. Also, just to summarize the collections, when there is no necrosis and duration is less than four weeks, it is acute peripancreatic fluid collection. If there is necrosis present, it is acute necrotic collection. More than four weeks, in IP, the disease is pseudosis and in necrotizing pancreatitis, it is walled off pancreatic necrosis. So I hope this clears the four aspects of revised Atlanta classification that you need to understand and remember so that it helps you use standard nomenclature while discussing cases of acute pancreatitis and it also helps you in planning management of your patients which we will see in the subsequent small talk series. Keep sending in your topics and do subscribe to our channel for further such interesting and simplified videos. Thank you.